Hear the good news, friends. Christ is risen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. We continue to celebrate Easter this season. Friends, I'm Jeffrey Zalatoris, the pastor at Harmony United Methodist Church. Today is April the 19th, and we continue our celebration this second Sunday of Easter in the Western Christian calendar, but it is the first Sunday of Easter in the Greek and the Orthodox Christian calendars. So this Sunday is our first day in 2020 when all Christians together are celebrating the Easter season. Thanks be to God. Friends, again, the, we are gathered online by Facebook and our website as an opportunity to minimize the spread of the illness of the coronavirus this season. But we continue to worship online to share our prayers with one another, to be in community virtually. And I give thanks to God for all of you, for your faith, for your prayers, for your hope, and for your love for one another and the world. Friends, I also offer you the prayers of the Baltimore Washington Conference through Bishop Easterling for the healing of those who are ill and ailing and for prayers of peace and compassion for those who are struggling emotionally in this season with anxieties and depression. Friends, I offer you prayers from the bishop for grace to abound to all. Let us be in a time of prayer as we begin our worship and music. Praise the Lord, Christ is risen. Bless the Lord who gives counsel and whose wisdom instructs the heart. Let your hearts be glad and souls rejoice, for the Lord secures you. Keep the Lord before you, and you shall not be defeated. Christ has shown us the pathway of life. Let us commit to the path of faith. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Let us pray. <clears throat> Holy God, 
through the mighty acts of Jesus Christ, you gave yourself willingly for the salvation of the world. By this you proved your love beyond compare. There is no love greater than to give your life for a friend. May your perfect love inspire us to love you and to love our neighbors all of our days. All praise to God. Amen. today is taken from 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith be more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Thanks be to God. Then the good news from John's Gospel, chapter 20, we'll be reading 19 through 29. Listen for the good news. 
when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, it was a dreadful Friday night, right before sundown. The peace of Christ had been silenced. As the stone was rolled in front of the cave mouth where Jesus' body lay, the peace of Christ lay entombed behind walls. The night of the Sabbath, the peace of Christ was bound by rock and soil. Throughout the day of the Sabbath, the peace of Christ was bound underground. And the night after the Sabbath, the first day of the week, the peace of Christ was still bound by walls. During that time, the earth knew not the peace of Christ. But during those days and nights, the disciples, too, they had fled, and the peace of Christ was not from them. For the disciples felt threatened by soldiers and guards and a general public of hateful souls. They went indoors, barred themselves from danger, and with them their ministry to share the peace of Christ was bound behind walls. Let us pray. Holy God of grace, through your words and the work of your Holy Spirit, let not the flame of your peace be diminished, but strengthen your peace in our hearts and in our minds, that we may share your peace with the world, where and as we are able. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Though the peace of Christ was bound in a tomb and bound behind the walls of a house, the peace of Christ did not go there to die. The peace of Christ would emerge again. It would grow anew as a hidden ember can flare back into a flame. For that Easter morning, the peace of Christ was no longer bound to the tomb. When Jesus was resurrected, when he bodily exited the tomb, the peace of Christ was alive again, reborn, resurrected to the new day. Yet that day, the servants of the Lord were still in hiding. How long would they hide? Would everything go back to the old normal, or would they have to live into a new normal in their day? Yet the disciples were needed for sharing the peace of Christ, that without the disciples, the peace of Christ was a mere whisper. The disciples needed to bear their cross and carry the message of the resurrected God, the peace of Jesus as Messiah. 
The disciples were entrusted to carry that message, to carry it to the towns and to the villages, to magnify the whisper of the peace of Christ into a cascading roar. The disciples were needed. But until they met the risen Christ, the disciples were justifiably afraid. Perhaps the disciples had, had promised one another to stay together, to make their decisions together, whether to remain sequestered and indoors, or whether to go out and proclaim Christ. They decided to stay together. But at the time, they were meeting behind walls themselves being entombed in a house. Indoors, the disciples entombed the message of discipleship, the message of repentance and forgiveness. The disciples had entombed their mission to share the peace of Christ to the world. And in that moment, the question remained, would the message and their mission lie dead within the walls? Or would it come out again? Our lesson from John's Gospel today raises that very possibility, for there was a serious risk of all of Jesus' work with the disciples crumbling apart. Indeed, the disciples would become necessary to magnify the message of the peace of Christ. And in the days so close to Jesus' death on the cross, the disciples had a choice. Stay silently in hiding, or share the peace of Jesus Christ to the world. I can almost imagine debates going on that, that Sunday morning, that first day of the week, when the disciples had gathered in that house, the door barred to prevent those from outside from coming in. I can also imagine those who are barred in the doors, not going out of doors, that the seeds of arguments might have been growing in that place. For they were fearful, their anxiety was high, they stayed together in one place, not venturing forth. Under stress, the disciples had to make these decisions, life and death decisions to them. Perhaps it was like a jury for them, that they would stay together and not do anything, not make any actions until they reached unanimous decisions. So I can imagine those disciples that first day of the week, that Sunday morning, taking a vote together. Who's in favor of going out and sharing the gospel? Who's in favor of staying hidden away? I suppose that first vote that morning, those who wanted to stay hidden away won the vote. I suspect they were not prepared, for they had not even had a hint of the witness of Jesus' emergence from the tomb. But I suspect there was one voice at least, at least one voice who, maybe tentatively, but was still willing to say, I'm ready to go and witness for Christ, despite the danger that's out there. Maybe it was the disciple whom Jesus loved. But with that debate going on indoors, inside the house, behind walls, Something was happening outside, and something amazing was taking place, for a stone had been rolled away from a tomb. The peace of Christ had emerged, and freed from the walls of rock, and freed from the blocked entrance of the tomb, Jesus was resurrected, Jesus was unbound and unrestricted, the peace of Christ was no longer bound by walls, the peace of Christ was set free. And the women who had gone to the tomb, they had witnessed the opening of the tomb. They met Jesus on the way back into town, and Jesus pronounced his peace for them. Greetings, he told them. Do not be afraid. And they ran to share the good news. Now imagine the atmosphere in that room of the house. A knock at the door, the entrance of the women inside, and the story of an empty tomb, and greeting Jesus on their way back, his instructions to go to Galilee. 
Imagine then two of the disciples still uncertain, racing to that tomb themselves to witness for their own eyes the empty tomb, the roll, the, the, the rock was aside. They came back to, I can imagine another vote was taken by those disciples in that room. Is it time to stay or is it time to go and share that message? I think the vote might have been in favor now of going out the door, but not yet unanimous. Because late in the day, Jesus entered the house. Late in the day, Jesus entered the house. The doors were locked and barred, but Jesus entered the house, a house where the walls of fear still stood, but he entered that house without a key because he was not bound by fear. He entered the house with evidence, and he showed the disciples his hands. He showed the disciples his side the places he'd been struck by nails and by a spear. And then he comforted them. Peace be with you. Jesus declared to the disciples. He looked like Jesus. He had the wounds of Jesus. He spoke like Jesus. He entered in with the authority of Jesus. He had no fear. He passed through the walls unbarred. For the peace of Christ had been set free. And the peace of Christ could pass through wall and pass through locked gate. The peace of Christ was being spread in a new way. It was not bound by doors that were locked. The peace of Christ entered in. The peace of Christ can enter your house too, even when you're indoors. The peace of Christ is not held without during this season of staying at home and social isolation. The peace of Christ still enters in and still goes forth from you too. The peace of Christ can enter by a phone call, a Zoom meeting, even online worship. The peace of Christ can be shared in a new way, even in our day, as it was shared in a new way when Jesus rose from the tomb and entered that house. And you can offer the peace of Christ today by email. By social media, by your Facebook posts, your Instagrams, you can even leave a, a doorstop delivery of food for a neighbor in need. The peace of Christ is still flourishing and is still being shared. It passed through walls 2,000 years ago. The peace of Christ passes through walls today. It knows no bounds. The peace of Christ is alive and well. Now, Jesus was not bound by the walls of the house, just as he was not bound by the walls of the tomb. Jesus was also not bound by the walls of disbelief. He offered evidence to doubters, and he anchored their hope by his presence. Jesus was not bound by the walls of human prejudice, for he proclaimed repentance and forgiveness of the sins to the whole world. Jesus was not bound by the walls of human greed and selfishness, for he offered untethered love. Jesus was not bound to such limiting human failings. And over the centuries, the peace of Jesus Christ has broken through walls of hatred, has broken down walls of abuse and trauma, has broken through walls of every form of discrimination. Beloved, Christ died for all, not just for some. And Christ rose, is resurrected, and lives for all, not just for some. Yet sometimes we Christians will try to put up our own walls. Sometimes because of fear, maybe, or anger, or despair, or our own foolishness, we will sometimes put up our own walls. And yet we know deep inside, when we put up a wall, we're actually putting up a wall to keep Jesus' peace out of us, not out of someone else. When we put up a wall, the person most walled up from Christ is ourselves. When we wall up someone, we lose the peace of Christ. 
In those days we sacrifice our faith, our hope, our love. So instead of infecting one another with hatred and vitriol and partisanship and bigotry, we are invited to a life with a clear mind, a life where Christ is invited, where the peace of Christ flourishes. For through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, we are invited, Peter says, we are invited to a life of living hope and inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading. But first, Peter doesn't tell us that the peace of Christ will end all of our sufferings, nor will it end all trauma and pain. No, Peter tells us, now for a little while, you have had to suffer various trials. Scripture does not tell us the world will treat us kindly or gently because we have a living hope in the resurrection of Christ. But Scripture does teach us that we can choose to live with a living hope, with genuine faith, a belief in Christ, and indescribable and glorious joy should we accept the peace of Christ. Should we accept the peace of Christ, this is what we shall inherit. But we know we do not feel these blessings because we face no harm or suffering. But despite the harm and suffering around us, we can still feel the blessings of hope and faith and of love and glorious joy through Jesus Christ. For we can witness Christ among the suffering. And we can witness Christ comforting the hurt and the wounded and the anxious, even of our day. For the disciples in those dangerous days, they had to make a choice, stay inside or go out. But to stay inside was to declare victory of fear over hope. To stay inside meant the peace of Christ was silenced behind walls. It would not grow. But outside the walls, yes, there was danger, yes, perhaps a reason to fear, but outside the walls there was opportunity, outside the walls there was new life, there was resurrection, there was an opportunity to share life abundantly. Outside was obedience to go where they were called to go, to serve how they were instructed to serve. Outside the walls was a world of people who might have faith for those who had not seen and yet had come to believe. Outside the walls was where the disciples were called to go. And so like a jury seeing all of the evidence laid out before them, the disciples, they were persuaded. Even when given his chance, Thomas was persuaded. The disciples reached a unanimous choice together. They would share the peace of Christ to the world. And for that, we are indebted to those disciples. The walls of the house would no longer bind the peace of Christ. They would leave that house in Jerusalem. They would go to the Galilee, proclaiming the good news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, preaching repentance and forgiveness of sins, sharing a gospel message of good news for the transformation of the world. And we have inherited that message, that the peace of Jesus Christ continues in us that we might share to the world that we carry forward in our time. Friends, in this in this season where many of us are staying at home as we are called to do by our local officials for the safety and the protection of those in our communities, we may feel like the walls of our homes are somehow holding us back, but in this season, the walls of our homes are helping us stay healthy and protected and to protect our neighbors and for the caregivers in our midst. But no, we can still serve. We can still serve in a way that shares the peace of Christ to the world around us. Friends, my faith in God is accepting that we can minister in new ways, under new circumstances, in new places, even when we are at home. For I have witnessed 
many God signs and sightings posted to websites and God signs posted on Facebook. I have read witnesses of faith. I have read of the meaningfulness of family and friends to one another. I have read of the deep connection people have to one another and their witness to God. I have read prayers of the faithful posted online. I have read hope-filled scriptures by friends of this congregation and of Facebook friends from all around the country. I know that the prayers of this community have been shared and are being prayed together by faithful witnesses of Christ's peace, both near and far. That is the message of the peace of Christ, not bound by walls, but spreading throughout the world. Friends, this day, we continue to celebrate the Easter with the proclamation that the peace of Christ is not bound by walls, but Christ's peace did not die in the tomb, that the peace of Christ is set free. And may the peace of Christ be with you all, and may you share the living peace of Christ to the world. Amen. together during this time for the unity of the worldwide body of Christ that together may all Christians exemplify virtues of faith hope and love in what we do and in how we say we pray Lord have mercy for wisdom and mercy to guide the leaders of nations and corporations in towns and service providers we pray. Christ, have mercy. For the poor, the homeless, and all who are vulnerable, especially in this season of uncertainty, we pray. Lord, have mercy. For the safety and the careful work of nursing aides and therapists, custodians and doctors, medical techs and nurses, and all who have had a hand providing health care, we pray. Christ, have mercy. And for your blessings, O God, on those joys and on those concerns that each of us bears in our hearts this day. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray the prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not always loved as you asked us to love. We have not always shown faith as you asked us to show faith. At times, we have been consumed by selfish insecurities in our own minds that have drowned out the cries of persons around us. We confess our weakness and sin, and we ask your forgiveness and for strengthened hearts. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Beloved, the good news is this. The Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, died, overcame death, and was raised from the grave to take away the sins of the world. As the children of God, therefore, be assured, your sins have been forgiven, and may the peace of Christ be with you. And as the children of God, those who have shown 
our faith to the world and have offered a message of Christ's peace to the world, we have seen God's work in our lives and around us. And at time at this point in our service, we offer our thanksgiving that our gifts may be used throughout our community to reach the poor, those who have needs, food insecurities. This is our opportunity to give thanks for those in our Harmony family who are able to contribute a portion of their gifts that God has given them back to our community and for our worship and for our services at the church. This week, I invite you to continue to make your offerings to the church, and we will offer our prayer of our offerings at this time. Holy God, we offer you our thanks this day, for you have been generous to us. You walk through walls to bless us with your presence. You show us your hands and your side to assure us that you have gone the full distance for us, and you love us as a true friend. We are grateful people, and with gratitude we make our offering to you this week. Bless this offering, and bless us as we share your love with each other, the community, and the world. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Let us proclaim with the confidence of the body of Christ, redeemed by his grace, the prayer that Jesus taught us. Let us say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, before we depart, I would like to thank those who were able to assist in preparing our worship today. I'd like to thank Elaine and Suzanne and David. And may I offer our blessing for our departure time. Friends, may the grace and the steadfast mercy of God be with you all. May God's blessings grant you strength in these days. And may you share the peace of Christ beyond walls. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.